Welcome to another vlog and this time around I'm in Connemara in Galway uh, in the west of Ireland and it's a magical place. Uh, we've had the wettest May probably on record and uh, as I was driving uh, from the east coast uh, over uh, it was raining heavily and as I approached Galway the rain cleared and the sun has come out. And as you can see behind me there's some uh, occasional cumulus clouds there um, as Paul Henry, the great artist who painted this part of the country, called them uh, full-breasted clouds. Uh, so we'll be spending the next two or three days uh, in Connemara and exploring the area, uh, scouting locations um, and hoping to find a, a nice image or two uh, on the way. So my first location uh, on this uh, trip in Connemara is not a typical uh, Connemara um, scene, uh, you know, of uh, beautiful blue mountains and big billowy skies and lakes uh, and valleys. Um, but it's quite an abstract and minimal scene um, that you'll see behind me here. This is the remains of a, an old pier. So the scene, as you can see behind me, is very simple. Um, I've set the camera low in the water um, and the first pier that you see to the left of the camera dominates the scene. To smooth out the water, I've set the exposure to about 30 seconds, which in this light, and using a, a 10 stop filter, um, really is the, the maximum time that I can get out of it at a 64 ISO F10 or F11 or so. Oh, and although the sky is quite bright and it's a very bright day, I'm actually quite happy. There's a nice um, a symmetrical cloud that sits atop the table type mountain uh, in the background. Well, this is the ugly side of uh, landscape photography and I'm standing by the side of quite a busy road here just near Man Cross and uh, a left turn at Man Cross going west will take you down to three uh, fishing huts and uh, the one that you'll see uh, to the right of me here is the most picturesque of all I believe um, and it's the closest to Man Cross as you turn left. Now here's a car going by here now, so I'm right on the yellow line. So what I've done is I've so taken, this really uh, isn't what landscape photography should be about, but I couldn't resist uh, stopping and taking a photograph of there's a, a river a snaking around, little oxbow kind of lake there, and the old um, uh, cottage with the corrugated iron roof, well rusted at this stage, and the beautiful mountains of Connemara behind it. So I think I'm at about um, 70 millimetres. So 70 millimetres just on the edge of the road here gets a little bit of foreground and some of the Phragmites uh, in the lower part of the picture. There's a little bit of grass, but there's a nice curved line that replicates the mountains above, uh, below the cottage. And then there's Hawthorne, which is in flower and it looks absolutely magnificent. Now it's still quite bright. Um, the uh, sky in this direction here is all blue. But fortunately, I've got those beautiful clouds uh, in the background here above the mountains. Now, I've put a polarizer on and I've also put a, a two stop salt. And uh, that first image at 70 mil gets some of the sky in. But I've also angled the camera up, and I'll need to be careful with that, uh, just to try to get more of that sky in and try to uh, mimic some of those uh, Paul Henry paintings. Um, not that I, uh, I'm, I'm going to get a, a good effort at this time of the day. Um, but it's a lovely scene. It's an absolutely beautiful scene here. But I'm going to finish up. I see another car uh, coming through. And uh, I think my time here uh, is done. And let's move on to the next spot.
Well, it's been a long day and I've done uh, quite a lot of scouting today, the tree fishing huts and the uh, old pier on Loch Corrib. And, um, and I found one or two other little locations. Um, there's the M mountain of Eris Beg, which I'm looking at here. And then we have the magnificent uh, 12 bends uh, behind me. But I've called it a day. It's about an hour and a half before uh, sunset. So I've pitched my tent uh, in the middle of the, uh, the uh, bog uh, that the old bog road here in Connemara runs across. And I'm literally in the middle of nowhere. Um, I cannot see any human habitation in front of me for miles around, um, nor uh, behind me. But as I speak, I can hear uh, an odd car every 10 or 15 minutes going by. The road's about 100 yards that way. But I've come in off the road and just to get that feeling of, um, of being in the landscape. And this is the landscape that uh, Paul Henry uh, painted. Now, Paul Henry um, is, is synonymous with Connemara. And his paintings uh, were really the first um, impression that people from uh, got of Ireland because his posters were used to advertise the country as a tourist destination. Uh, Paul Henry, he went to Paris uh, at the start of the 20th century and what a place to be there. As he said himself, he would have walked halfway across Paris just to see a Van Gogh. So he was in Bohemian Paris at the time of the post-impressionists. And when he came back home, he fell in love with Connemara and uh, he lived in Ackle for a while. He died in, in Bray in County Wicklow in, I think it was 1958. But he's most well known for his wonderful paintings of Connemara. Um, I've noticed in his paintings, uh, sometimes he uses just the lower third as the landscape, usually with thatched cottages and stands of uh, turf that have been cut. Um, and he also painted uh, the locals uh, digging potatoes and working uh, the fields. Um, so it really is with Paul Henry in mind that I've come down uh, to Connemara and I don't think I could have picked a better place to pitch my tent in here. This is landscape at its purest. So we'll leave it at that for this evening. Well, a very good morning uh, from the Old Bog Road in Connemara. And uh, it all happened here at about half four, um, exactly an hour or so before uh, sunrise. And there was a lovely golden glow in the sky. Uh, and I was too slow out of the tent uh, to catch it. And also I was fixated on getting to this particular spot, which I walked to uh, yesterday evening. And uh, when the light was really gone, but at that time, there were beautiful reflections in the lake. And uh, in retrospect, I should have actually taken the camera with me on that walk um, because the 12 bands were reflecting nicely in the lake. So that was a fail. Um, I tried to capture a panorama. I've taken actually a number of panoramas here um, using about, I think, a, about a, an 80 mil uh, focal length, which gives me uh, the, uh, the bottom part of the lake here, sweeping around the lake. So really the, the, the option is just to capture that lake, the outline of the lake more than anything else and how that plays in the landscape with the 12 bends uh, behind. And there were some shafts of light coming through, you know, a few of the gaps here, here and here. And I think I've uh, captured them nicely. Um, but it seems to be quite overcast now. There's still a little bit of a glow in that uh, grey sky above me. So the plan for the day um, is to get some breakfast. I'm going to get back, put the kettle on, have a cup of tea um, and a nice hot breakfast. And then I'll think about uh, where I'm going to go next.
Well, the sun has followed me west out past Clifton and onto Omi Island, uh, which is only accessible uh, on a low tide. And it's very interesting having to drive across the sand um, that has been left behind by the receding tide. Um, so I've come to the very tip of Omi Island, looking out over uh, an island called Krua Island. Um, and I've never seen this island before. I've never been on Omi before. So it's great to uh, discover a new uh, location and to uh, wander around. And it certainly does have the feel that uh, some of the offshore islands in Ireland has. It's uh, very peaceful, full of the songs of skylarks and meadow pipits, ringed plovers on the rock. And the rocks here are uh, full of drift. I don't think I've ever seen so much uh, healthy looking drift um, on rocks and lichen everywhere. So it's an absolutely magical place. It's a lovely afternoon now, the sun has come out. Obviously not fantastic for photography, but I found this little, um, this little uh, inlet and um, the foam from the receding tide um, is uh, creating quite a marked uh, light um, uh, leading line uh, onto Krua Island. And there's wonderful, you may see them in shot here, there's wonderful rocks that are fragmented and lying on their sides. Um, absolutely magnificent rocks down here and that's really what drew me down uh, to this place. So um, with regards to the photograph, it's a portrait mode uh, to get in some drift in the lower left hand side. Um, to take the gully from the right hand side right the way across um, to the left but not touching the left hand side of the frame and then with Crua Island in the distance and the sky given there's not much um, of interest going on there is really just a um, in the very top third if that. Well, I've come to the final stop on uh, this Connemara journey. Um, and the reason for that is basically tomorrow is forecast for uh, all sun, no cloud. So um, uh, I've uh, decided to head home. Um, so I'll finish up here in the wonderful uh, Derry Clare uh, Lock. Um, and this image and this location um, really is uh, the most recognizable face of Galway. Uh, I was lucky enough um, I was wait actually I was waiting in Ballinakill Harbour um, which is a beautiful harbour leading into the Twelve Bends for that little bit of light. It didn't arrive and I didn't take out the camera um, and when I arrived here it was the same it was quite dull. There's very high altitudinal clouds but there's a thick cover of them and the sun's not getting through. Um, so everything has that uh, uh, grey uh, look to it today. But for about 10 minutes when I arrived, um, there was bright sun uh, on the actual trees and, uh, and it was a nice uh, change to the kind of light that I've got uh, in later on the afternoon uh, today. So I hope you've enjoyed this vlog and uh, I hope you'll join me uh, next time. Oh